fire and wind come from the sky, from the gods of the sky. But Krum is your god. Krum, and he lives in the earth. Once giants lived in the earth, Conan. And in the darkness of chaos, they fooled Krum. And they took from him the enigma of steel. Krum was angered, and the earth shook. And fire and wind struck down these giants, and they threw their bodies into the waters. But in their rage, the gods forgot the secret of steel and left it on the battlefield. And we who found it are just men. Not gods, not giants. Just men. And the secret of steel has always carried with it a mystery. You must learn its riddle, Conan. You must learn its discipline. For no one, no one in this world can you trust. Not men, not women, not beasts. Kyle, thanks for joining me and Andy for the Legendary Creature Podcast. So, if you're listening with your kids or your conservative grandma, maybe don't, because we swear. Or you can check us out on YouTube, because hey, that's no place for conservative old women or children. Fuck yeah. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> you were last year when we did the therapy session for me and the whole, like, me and my problem with Agro in agro. this format. I feel like I'm reliving this whole th- experience again. <laughs> Does it like come I, to I a, got, a feverish pitch right I got here? Pretty triggered in that episode. I remember thinking, like, okay, I'm actually sounding like an asshole right now, but I feel like I'm about to do that again all, all over <laughs> with 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 Boros. <laughs> so yeah, so we're talking Boros, and I think. Well, I've been bitching at you for all day about it up until well, now. yeah. So uh, like, now I'm just like, let's just like, go. I'm trying to think of the the as we've we've done these series, like we did the mono series, and now we've been doing the guild series. Mono white was really hard because I think you and I both felt sort of apathetic because it didn't seem particular particularly functional. Uh, Selesnia didn't interest you that much, and then Boros. There's there's a high tension of frustration oh, I'm, I'm yeah when we did mono white i just couldn't figure out a way to make it work and and yeah and i weirdly enough like one of my favorite decks now is mono white yeah and, and i hate when people do that like well i thought this one thing and then i tried it and now it's my favorite thing like <laughs> that that it's always that testimony has always bothered turns me. out vegemite's dope yeah, dude turn, yeah that's yeah. Mono white is definitely like me, my Vegemite. <laughs> but now that we're on this Boros thing, like I just, I, it's just a scam. Like <laughs> Boros is a is a is a Boros new, and is a Commander new players scam. So that's the the deck I decided to hit. Okay. So let's contextualize the color. Pairing, yeah. Let's talk like about let's doing. talk about Boros as a whole before let's we put it together. Dive into specifics here. There's not that many Boros decks in the grand scheme of things in Commander. Yeah. So the top Commander, Aurelia the War Leader, doesn't even top a thousand decks. Yeah, doesn't even hit a thousand. They're eight hundred and seventy four on their the most track. popular person isn't even even in hitting a thousand, and she's been out for about what almost five years. It's like five years, and yeah. following closely behind is Gisela with about forty fewer decks. Yeah, and everybody who's making these decks are just falling for it. So with like to me, I kind of think I was telling you, I, I, I feel like Boros sort of has this identity of uh Boros wants bodies. Yeah, it's the go wide colors. Yes. It's the color of fanaticism and, and zealotry is is they want a lot of people and yeah. To carve a red and righteous line through <laughs> If Everyone's, you will not get in line, I will cut you with fire and righteousness. Yeah, that's kind of the message. But when it, what it ends up happening in in Commander is it just can't realize its dream because <laughs> everyone has twice twice the life 
life totals they started with. And it, there's it, numerous it, more opponents that you have to deal with too. Yeah, it came to the potluck thinking all it needed to bring was chips and soda and, and ended up thinking, oh, I thought you were bringing the taco meat and the tortillas <laughs> too. And Wait, didn't this happen to you? This happens to me all the time. <laughs> Another reason why I'm triggered. <laughs> it just comes up short for what we need in this format. Everyone's life totals are doubled. You have multiple opponents. Like it just, it can't, it can't close that gap the way you think it needs to. And so what I think you're a lot saying of, is if you bring Boros to the table, you're just sitting there eating dry tortilla chips, dry tortilla chips and, you know, drinking the Kmart dollar, dollar value, Dr. Cola. Pepper, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. K. So it's been irritating me for a while, this trying to work out a list, because I think when we started this podcast, we didn't want to. First off, be hype men about anything. Like we yeah. Weren't, we weren't, we weren't going to have the, this is awesome, and this is amazing, and this is shenanigans. And then try and, and find is, some kind of way to be like, oh, that was cool. And this is funny. Like, we, or yeah, this is going to be hilarious and all that. Like, we kind of, if you've been listening to our podcast, you can hear us go on about your opponents won't let you do this. These aren't going to happen. You need to manage your expectations about this. Like we want to make practical players well, and, out of everybody. And the reason for that is what's the eventuality if you have a bad deck? You sit there and you don't have fun. And you waste your money. Right. You yeah. bought a deck that doesn't play out. Like I had a game this last weekend. I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. And I didn't have fun yeah. for that whole game. Yeah. <laughs> so Boros doesn't, we're just not prepared to do the whole like, it's not that bad, you know, I, even like, even like the most positive, like uh, hype men content creators out there will even, even they won't go that far with Boros. They'll kind of be like, yeah, it's definitely missing these things. And if we could just get a few of these, we'll be fine. And I don't, I don't think it's the card draw ramp that that's the key, the key to fixing this color combination. I don't, I honestly don't think that's going to be enough Yeah, in the so, commanders. So I... Yeah, and I think I think our discussion we can I, I have a few principles that I think Boros allows us to create some talking points about and just about gameplay in general that we can maybe glean something from this exploration. But yeah, it's not pretty when it comes to Boros and Commander. Yeah. So starting just with the colors itself, like we already kind of listed, yeah, so the top commanders that exist you, you can kind of look at EDH rec and we're looking at things like they, you know, Aurelia wants to give you extra combats, right? But she doesn't bring with her a seven mana damage yeah, to, she, to speed even that Even with through. two combats, it's six damage on one turn. So what she wants is, is going wide. Yeah. Uh, Gisela kind of it's not exactly the same thing. She doubles the damage. So sure. rather than getting an extra combat, you're getting more out of your combats or any kind of sources of damage that you're creating. Yeah. But her, the mana, intensity it goes way up here she's she's seven yeah, you're mana. probably gonna see her once considering the colors you're and playing everyone and everyone knows it's coming so they're they're ready to you know do the simple math and figure that out and then down from there it's eros the god of victory who he's a seven four for four mana so he's aggressively costed but he needs you to maintain a board state mm -hmm. of white and red or either or yeah to get him into the get him into the battlefield to fight along with his cadre and then yeah he also says creatures benefit from him being around. So they so a lot of these commanders they 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 bestow abilities to their creatures, and those yeah. those abilities usually mean the creatures are going sideways. So combat is, is extremely interesting. Yeah, and then when you go down from there, things kind of devolve into you know calumny, right? So <laughs> if we're we're talking about the colors by themselves, let's just kind of put it up against the other pairings that we have. We already know that the formula for success or at least not formula, but the the salt and pepper of the commander recipe is ramp and card draw. This is universally true for, for any content creator you're listening to. No one has ever said, yeah, you don't need it. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be fine. You can cut Everyone, that Everyone, I think, deck. has that consensus that we're looking for ways to make those things realize. This is why cards like Soul Ring are included in every deck. It's a mana-positive, colorless card that can mm -hmm. go into any deck anytime and you're always okay to see it you're really happy to see it in the early game and you're nah, all right i'll take it in the mid game and you're like whatever the late game you're, yeah. you're never annoyed at that one yeah this is why ristic study is a is a expensive common from a very long time ago but still it's it's not it's it's a 
very low to the ground, easy card draw engine that's recursive through everybody's turns. Yeah. And then it comes with a kind of a skill curve of how to people, how for people, how like to play around it. Like they need to learn how to play around it. Yeah, exactly. People that don't get punished. This is why con Sphinx is a big in this format. This is why, uh, well, Kodama's reach and things like yeah, that. This is why Kodama's reach and uh, Cultivate are big in this format. So if you if you kind of li- looking at these cards in your mind as I'm listing them off, I'm talking about blue a lot and I'm talking about green a lot mm-hmm. because those are the colors of those two things. Yeah. Now when we shift away from these colors, uh, we look at black, which you and I have described black as having mediocre card draw. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. It's not great. You you pay a price for it. But Phyrexian for Arena fun. is a is a high priced card. Mm-hmm. Some people argue its effectiveness, but it's basically two cards of your upkeep for a price of of one life. Yeah. Now, why black is so good in Commander is that it for a couple just to kind of not go through everything, but kind of give you the surface reasons is one, the costs it demands from you usually to get things like card draw is from life, and your life is is doubled. These cards, one yeah, would you- hope, are f- configured around a twenty li- twenty point life total, but now that we've doubled it. It's not asking you to pay five cards to draw three or pay five life to draw three. Yeah, which use, you, using which you probably necro- do if the using mana was necropotence low. when you only have twenty life. Necropotence is you're kind of like playing a little bit with fire. You Necropot- only have so many cards you're going to get out of that, but yeah. when you have forty, necropotence was busted in a in a standard format back when it first was released. Sure, and that was at twenty life. So now when we put it in the space of, oh, let's double the life, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the turn equality balances us off a little bit. That's why the card's not banned, because you only have half, the, you only have a quarter of the turns that exist in the game. Sure. Consider, depending on how many people are playing. But yeah, and then the second one is that Black is adept at tutoring any specific card at any specific juncture of the game. Yeah. This is why Demonic Tutor is, is really expensive. It's our format that are driving these cards' is prices up. Yeah. And then... That's it. Those those three colors, like they're the best fitted for the format. And then when you start marrying them, marrying them together, they can cover the weaknesses of the final two, red and white. So if you yes. pair black and white together, because of the life size here, and a lot of the effects that hit multiple people and pull it in, so like uh, extort. Extort is a it, really valuable it's a, mechanic. And so commander. black just loves this situation and white will benefit from it. Yeah. And the tutoring effects that white normally wouldn't have or the pay life draw card. And then the white can get you the life back. So you're not even really threatening your own, you know, yeah, your life total stay, stays fine. So Orzov has a place in commander and it has strong decks associated with, with commander. So this is where that comes from. If yeah. you, if you take green and give it to, uh, green and red, well, now you have ramp to ramp out very aggressive red creatures that normally just wouldn't be happening all that fast. Oh, yeah. So going tall is it, it's starting to look more and more attractive. G- green and red combined have a very good going tall strategy. Yeah. So, and yeah, there's hex proof and stuff like that that like normally would oh, be able yeah. to be given to creature and, and the green span, the green uh, creature based card draw, like Hunter's Insight, things like this, like. You can you can refill really quick. Oh, yeah. Is that the most stable strategy? Yeah. But if you put blue and red together, well, now you're feeding card draw into a red's inability to do it. Yeah. You know, or even combining their two abilities and just being reckless with it with like wheel effects and things like that. Oh yeah. Now you're just putting your foot all the way down to the metal with the card draw with red and blue. <laughs> so where we're here, where we're at now, is in the Boros world. And everything that I've described up to now, you already know, they don't have it. They don't have, white doesn't have. They don't have it in the effective ways. White does not have good card draw. Yeah. White has single instance card draw. Like they're on instant and sorcery spells where you draw a single card. And they're usually just cantrip effects. It's yes. not, it's not, give me a couple of cards. Let me refill my hand. Right. They just replace the card. It doesn't, it's not. So the card is worthless because you're picking a bad card to just replace itself yeah, it's, when it's you draw. it's dysfunctional. There's some exceptions, but that's kind of the idea. Yeah. So you're usually getting your card draw from artifacts, and you're getting your car, card draw from maybe... Uh, you might do Weird something. niche effects, like ways to make to- tokens and skull clamping them away. Yeah. And then you have reds drawing effects, which don't really help white along. It's all about aggressively digging through the deck. Yeah. Yeah, white has some recursive elements, so you could kind of lean on that. But this kind of leads us to the last problem of, of Boros. 
there's not a commander that gives a shit about these things. Right. There's not a commander that behaves like Tashar and is Boros. Like if if P- Tashar was Boros, Tashar would be he'd fuck. I mean, he, I love Tashar already, but holy he'd shit, be, he'd be yeah, be hot. It, he'd be hot. If if there was things that if they had commanders that cared about the specific things these two colors are good at by themselves, things would look a little different. But I think the one thing that everybody's kind of landed on, at least in Wizards Town. Is well, they're really good at aggr- like low to the ground a- aggressive strategies. Yeah, but they haven't been able to give us a commander to close the gap to make that threatening enough. Yeah, it's true. So w- they're they're hitting that one button. The hey, well, you know, red creatures at low CMC can be pretty aggressive, and there's some pretty aggressive white creatures that's, that that are low CMC. Like the Mirren Crusader is a good example. Oh yeah, these are really good to low to the ground creatures that should they get any help from their commander they become pretty scary but the 40 life total is not you know it's like okay yeah we have time to deal with it so you find often that when you're playing boros you're able to kill two people one other person and then freak everyone out and get yourself killed in the process that's that has happened over and over and over again so i've built the top three boros commanders you've tried them all and you're not an you're not an idiot when it comes to 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 white and and you're not an idiot when it comes to doing boros in any other context because you yeah. had back you, when you and I did our standard tournament days you had a, you had one that worked yeah it was explosive I mean it wasn't like consistent but it was explosive yeah so I'm sorry that I'm not in one of the best of moods when we have to come to the table and talk <laughs> about this because I like the idea of a boros I'm okay with going wide I just I don't I don't maybe there's just something that I'm not seeing about how to balance it off because maybe it could go much too fast where it's it's just not even fun or or i don't know like i look at saskia and i go yeah her her mana is prohibitive but i think about if you took blue or if you took green and black out of her color identity and just made her like you know too red too white and you know like lowered her just made her her mana cost easier to pull off i still don't think i'd be that freaked out by her hmm i really don't interesting it was the green and black creatures that freaked me out the fact that she can act, <laughs> that she can get on infect now and things like, you know, like yeah. that and, ma- and mana dorks and things like that that freak me out. I don't think I was really afraid of the. It's the usually Boros a handful of, of cards that, that from red that really do it, like malignus or something like that. Though. Yeah. You're like, okay, that one's fucking scary. That one is scary, but that's pretty late in. So what, and I use her as an example because I think like she's one of the best aggro cards or aggro commanders in the game. Her, yeah. Marquise of the Black Rose, you know, th- yeah. these are ones that you can play without having to be a total cock. I mean, Mar Marquise is pretty rough. Like she can get dug in pretty it's hard. It's pretty hard to and undo that. One. I like, I, I think they're good for different reasons. I think Marquise gives you the board stability that normal aggro decks just don't get because of her, that one, one counter recursion thing. Yeah. And Saskia, and I think Saskia has a Saskia volume just, of damage. Yeah, that's it's just, just the sheer speed Yeah, the two people are threatened. And then the guy who goes up behind a pillow for it still ain't safe. Yeah. So, we came together for two lists, and I've been kind of around the globe on everything. We've covered other Boros commanders and other podcasts that I liked better um, to talk, but w- they really weren't in line with. Th- th- really, we got to just stick with what we've been given. You know, this yeah. is definitely the note you're going to be hitting more often than not when you go when to look at a Boros, Boros set, yeah. which is going sideways strategies. That's yeah. probably much what we're going to talk about now. But yeah, we have one during our Dominary episode, which was. Tish, what is her name? Tiana. Tiana. I really like that deck. I would build it. What's funny is that that's actually a hot button topic. The, you know, the Tiana and my being detained deck. Like there's some people that really aren't into it, but I think it's, I think it's, they don't like the strategy. Like it annoys them. Well, and that it, they're not sure that it's effective enough either. I think, I think it, it is. I think you could do it. I think it'll work. Yeah. I think. And then is. we talked about sun, spear and fire gorger or whatever the guy yeah the fire song and sun speaker yeah that which oddly there's i thought there would be fewer decks of those there's 226 of those probably because somebody spent a lot of money to get a hold of that card and (laughs) i'll be damned if i'm not building that deck yeah so where i ended up landing with some collaboration with kyle because honestly this is more his realm that he's i don't think it's where you hang out you've just been there yeah i've been there yeah, it's like, it's like uh, used to be it's like the people. gothic castle, you know, like the gothic castle. I don't tell people that that's where I hang out. It's just uh, it's just where I, yeah. 
So let me preamble this this list a little bit just to kind of bestow some mysticism to it that that <laughs> is, let's be honest, a fucking cop out. But here we go. So I, where I landed was Jor Kadeen, the Prevailer. Okay. So he's a legendary from actually New Phyrexia. He's one of the like the last surviving Mirren. Um, yeah, it's Jor Kadeen the Prevailer. He's, By the way, his art's fucking dope. Can we just... If, oh yeah, I like well, it. Like, give some props to that part at least. <laughs> yeah, I like I like what he looks like. He's very like Conan-y <laughs> He really is. He looks like something from like yeah, an eighties like. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I really, I actually really do like the art. So Jorkadin the Prevailer is yeah, Prevailer. He's he's three, a red and a white for a legendary creature, human warrior. He has first strike. Uh, he's a five four. He says, but he has an ability that says metalcraft. Creatures you control get plus three plus zero. Oh, as long as you control three or more artifacts. So Middlecraft was kind of like the uh, Mirren side of this war. The Infect was on the, the Phyrexians, and then it seems like Metalcraft was something that the the, the Mirrens cared about. Yeah. So they, they would get various abilities, like I have Double Strike if you have three artifacts, or I have... Uh, Honestly, like Metalcraft is kind of cool. I've never really used it too much, but it they've is They've revisited cool. it without calling it Metalcraft, I think, a little bit, but I haven't really... I don't know. I don't really seen it like spammed as hard as, yeah. as so, or as it was back then. So there's a couple angles. I feel like we're, me and Kyle kind of landed on where you could take this. I think one place that might people might immediately go to is, Oh, well let's put a lot of artifact creatures in the deck. So something like affinity or uh, even just like ones from even his era maybe adding thopters, things like that, because they're they're yeah, kind of can, doing double duty. They're a creature that gets like plus a, three, and they're an artifact that adds to his... You adds do to like his, a mere turbine and yeah, get mere, going a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and, it's five mana, but you, but, you, know, you know, the artifact creatures, like a porcelain legionnaire. I think sure. maybe, I, I, bet, I bet you money, like anybody who remembers back then, they think about the porcelain legionnaire. It's a 3-1 first strike yeah. for, I think it's four but you can use the Phyrexian mana to just put it out for three. Oh, yeah. So with him, it'd be a 6-1 first strike. Okay. But I think when you start going down this path, you suddenly realize that you're really putting your eggs in one basket. <laughs> so a board wipe handles two things. It reduces your metal craft ability. Yes. And it kills all your creatures. Yes. So where me and Kyle landed was, let's just do what Commander wants us to do anyway and fill up the deck full of rocks. And th- that's where we'll be getting our me- metal craft is from rocks. Yeah. And we will be going for tokens and, a- and efficiently costed ways to get those, that plus three on as many pieces of paper or p- pieces of cardboard as we can. <clears throat> so can right? I give, can I give an analogy here with why I think that's a route that you can use? Cause if you look at EDH rec, it doesn't really look like people are doing that with Jor Kadeen. Okay. Like going this kind of token route, but, um, <clears throat> I couldn't, I couldn't find the name for this principle, but it's something along the lines of like uh, a temporal commodity. So this would be something like a seat on an airplane. Mm -hmm. So if there's a flight and they don't fill all the seats on that flight, the airline can't like that's, 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 that's lost, lost. Yeah. That plane's leaving with or without, whether it's full or not. Yeah. So if they didn't fill that flight or at least not full, but you know, they lost half, if it's half full, it's still flying. Yeah. They lost, they lost money on those seats. They didn't fill. Yeah. Right. And so I, I kind of think that there's a lot of temporal commodities in magic, the gathering. Okay. Um, a specific instance that we can think of is if like you don't ever end up tapping down your lands to use mana, right? Like just pass a turn. And if you don't have some kind of instant speed thing that you're planning on doing before your turn starts, you don't ever use that mana. That mana is gone, right? That happens a lot when you're playing like a blue deck. Yes. Like, or anything that has where, yeah, the, the, to use your airplane analogy, like the plane left the airport and now it's flying around the table and you're, you held up mana in anticipation of somebody making a move that you weren't wanting to see, like a, I'm going to counter the next board wipe and then, yeah. I'll, and then I'll make my move. And then it never happens. And you ended up not resolving thing, anything on your turn to that. I'd say, well, this is where mana sinks that the cure for that is a mana sink. Right. Exactly. Or so, but that's, but that's a temporal commodity, <laughs> say, right? But, yeah. Like the, if, if you don't have something set up, in order to allow you to have mana sinks, mm. you're, you're losing that commodity. 
right? There's a lot of others in, in the game. Another example would be Regna and Krav. So if you have a creature to sacrifice and mana, like if you have, let's say you've got a bunch of black mana available. Okay. And you use, you've got creatures to sacrifice and you just use one black and sacrifice all those creatures except for Regna and Krav. You get the two spirits that turn. But if you don't do this on each turn, because you're going to net more tokens if you do one on each turn with Regna and Krav. So to right? relate it back to this deck, to kind of... So to bring it back to we Jork... Want, we want seats to put the plus three on. Exactly. That's exactly where we're, I'm going with that really analogy. We're not really interested in only giving him plus like, three. It's a wasted, it's like a wasted damage. Yeah, Jorkadine is flying a 747. You want to pack as many passengers into that plane as you can. Yeah, not just and the put seat him in the fighter is the plus jet. three plus zero. Yeah, we we don't want to put him in the fighter jet if we're going to use the airplane. Yeah. So let's think about how to fill the seats then. Let's start with that. Okay. Okay. So we've got tokens. That's probably the most efficient budget passenger we can think of. So it's Goblin Rabble Master, two and a red. Um, other go- uh, other goblin creatures you control attack each turn fable who gives a shit at the beginning of combat on your turn create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste so every turn you're getting a goblin yeah um, whenever goblin ma- rabble master attacks it gets plus one until the end of the turn for each other attacking goblin it's a 2-2 two, two. and then we have just the enchantment version of that pretty close which is um, goblin assault so it's an enchantment for two and a red at the beginning of your upkeep you get a goblin and they have haste and it says each a goblin creatures attack each turn if able. So we're just getting a goblin every turn from these two. Dope. So they're one ones for a while, but then as soon as our, you know, Conanny got type guy comes down here, <laughs> we get they go up to three they go up to four four ones. A little bit more, you know, noodly for the block. Um something more recursive in this is while we're talking about goblins, the siege gang commander. Oh, yeah. So three, a red, and a red. When Siege Gang Commander enters the battlefield, create three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. And then you may pay one and sacrifice a goblin Siege Gang Commander to two damage any target. So now we're getting, what is that, three? Yeah, so you're getting, so you're getting nine just from him. Oh. Plus, well, I mean, I mean he gets, the, gets it too. So you're getting 12 damage, just 12 extra damage just from him. Right? 12, yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah, 17. So it's 17 damage just from this guy. Because each one of the tokens gets plus three. Yeah, exactly. He gets plus three. He gets He's plus a three. two. They're a one, one. You feel me? I, f- I feel you. Uh, what's another one? Well, we're talking about people like that. Hope of uh, the hero blade hold. Oh, hero blade hold, hold is, uh, is. So this by itself already does a lot of damage, but let's. Walk yeah, you it's, through this one a it's, it's, bit. A, it's a Boros All-Star for sure. So two, a white, and a white. She has Battle Cry. Whenever this creature attacks, each uh, attacking creature gets plus one, plus oh until the end of the turn. I really miss that mechanic. Battle was, Cry is actually it's pretty cool. We need to return, dude. When Hero Bladehold attacks, put two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens into the battlefield tapped and attacking. It's a 3-4. So with this, she would be a 6-4 with, with that thing hanging out. She, yeah. Does the battle cry? So, so they get. Getting they're all two four. ones. So they're all five ones. Yeah. So six. Uh, yeah, that's sixteen. Sixteen damage from one creature attacking. Right. Yeah. Am I wrong? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. It's yeah. That's just ugh, like that's a lot just from her. Well, and him because uh, yeah, he, we're we're, Jor- we're assuming that Jor- Kadeen has created metal craft because he's first strike. I don't. There's a lot of re- like he's gonna do eight a swing for eight. Oh yeah, you know because he's, he's a, a pretty safe attacker. He's because th- his ability applies to himself. Yeah. So I don't know if I said that, but it says creatures you control, not other creatures you control. So he's a he's an eight four first strike when he's got the metal craft going up. Yeah. Um. Anybody else? Oh, the mere battle sphere. So he's like, this is probably the one instance where you're using the battle ball and not tapping it to pump yeah, it up. Yeah, you'll generate more through. damage by attacking with the tokens than you will tapping them down. Yeah. Normally you'd get what is it? So it does eight and four. Because it does four ahead of it. When yeah, do four ahead of it, and then it would become an eight, whatever. Because it wasn't. So that's it's, potentially twelve damage. Yeah, it's twelve damage with the mere battle sphere, and its tokens are in isolation, right? Yeah, but in this case, he brings how many? He, gives, he brings in four. Yeah, so four four one ones now become four four ones, and so, then he's a four. So here we have twenty. 
plus he gets the extra three. Oh yeah, as well. he gets so it's twenty three. So yeah, so sorry to put put the ball in the back and like what he does. He's seven mana for an artifact creature, mirror construct. When mirror battlefield enters the battlefield, put four one one colorless mirror artifact creature tokens into the battlefield. So he can put you right on line, even if you're not. Oh yeah. You know, uh, whenever mirror for metalcraft, I mean, whenever mirror battlesphere attacks, you may tap X untapped mirror creatures you control. If you do, the mirror battlefield gets plus X plus zero until the end of the turn and deals X damage to defending player. So, but with this case, you probably want to send the tokens with him because now they become four ones. Yeah, I mean, you've you've virtually doubled the damage output by having using them as attackers with Jorkadine. Rather than doing it, rather than way. doing the traditional, uh, the handwear garrison, which is kind of like a diet, um, a diet hero blade hold. So it's two and a red. Whenever handwear garrison attacks, you put two one one red human creature tokens into the battlefield tapped and attacking for a two three. It gets what? What's it? It trans- goes with the land. So that when it gets comes together, it gets really scary because then it turns into a seven four, and yeah, I think no, it brings I in. I think it brings in three twos. They're three twos. So they're they're. F- that's just fucking crazy. Yeah. That, that yeah. the amount of damage there. Um, anybody else that gives us tokens? Oh, there's this last one that I think is pretty good for is in the creature section, which is Angel of Intervention. So it's three and a white and a white, so five mana. Um, flying vigilance and lifelink. Other creatures you control get plus one plus one. So she anthems everybody. Anthems everything. Um, but then she has fabricate two. So you can either put two plus one plus one counters on her or make two servos when she ETBs. In this case, you're gonna want to make the servos. Because yeah, so he'll they're make filling more seats. So he'll make her a five one flying a vigilance flying lifelink in the air. She will make him plus one. So now he'll be a nine four first strike. Yeah. And then she will also add plus one plus one to her servo. So now there will be a five one or five two servo. Yes. Like it. So add- not a lot of investment to get a lot of damage just jumping up. And that and that's the thing that Boros wants is like finding creative ways to just jump a lot of damage onto things. Yeah. So kind of talking about pushing the the damage a little further, um, up the scale of 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 because I, 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 him by himself is a lot, but we'll, we there's some things that we can do to kind of just push it a little further. Mm-hmm. So I put in the signal pest. He's battle cry zero to one. So he's okay. just gonna. Because he's an artifact, and yeah, he can't be blocked except by creatures of flying or reach. So he's it's pretty safe to attack with this guy. Yeah, um, but he has battle cry. Same thing as the the hero blade hold. Whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one plus zero oh until the end of the turn. So this next part's just about kind of doing that. Like how do we how do we add to what he's doing? So now they'd be four one. They'd be four plus zero oh when they attack. Yeah. Um, since he is pretty big, we probably want to even just push him even further. We can get him onto a two clock by giving him double strike. So the fire shrieker is something that I included. So it's, it's three mana for, it, for an equipment that says equip creature gets double strike. And, and serves, for two. serves two purposes, right? Yeah. So it puts your art, puts you in metal, cl- puts you closer to metal craft. And now he's a, uh, an eight, five double strike. Yeah. So two hits and they're out. Oh, sorry. There was one more token generator I forgot to do. It's the Genesis Chamber. <laughs> oh. I don't. I don't know how I feel about this one. I. I guess it's me probably being greedy. But the Genesis Chamber is a two mana artifact. It says whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller creates a one one colorless mirror artifact creature token. So every time you put out a new creature, it's bringing an artifact with it for one. Yes, because they are an artifact mirror, and then you're basically getting four damage from that. Which is awesome. Which, when we're going sideways, there's that. I will note another uh, token generator that uh, does show up on EDH Rec is the Thopter Assembly. See, I thought that was too slow. It is kind of slow because it's, it's six mana. Because they get created, I think, and then and then they don't have haste, right? Like, they're stuck. Like Yeah, so it says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control no Thopters other than Thopter Assembly, return Thopter Assembly so to its owner's hand. So there's two whole turns that this thing hasn't given you anything five, to attack. I, one, just thought it, I just thought it was a little too slow. Yeah, so exactly. It is kind of slow. So yeah, these these kind of things kind of put the damage up. Uh, dictate of the Twin Gods. So this one's just very, no subtlety here. Three <laughs> a red and a red. Uh, it's an enchantment. You can flash it in. If a source would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So with these kind of damage things we're talking about, I mean, the battle ball by itself would be lethal. 
Yeah, that's, because we we, we put that at by itself with Jorkadine, it's 23. Now you've got 46 damage. Yeah, you're just pushing them out of the game. So you attack, they don't respond. They're like, okay, I'm going to take this really heavy hit, but I, I have pl- I have plans for these blockers or whatever. And then, sure. you go, okay, I'm dictating, I'm flashing the dictate in and just pushing them out. Um, so yeah, this is kind of this is kind of where we're at. Uh, there's some other token generation that's not coming from creatures, but they're they're pretty self-explanatory. Things like you know, deploy to the front makes a it's a seven mana a sorcery that makes a to a, a soldier for every creature on the battlefield. Um, your suggestion was increasing devotion just because it's recursive. It's yeah. So my my thought is, if you haven't played boros before because that's 20 and if it's right not there. self-evident uh you will get board wiped and so in that case if you're going along with kind of this this what we're talking about here where the majority of your artifacts are just mana rocks then all you necessarily need to do is get Jorkadine back out and something that produces co- tokens well in the case of increasing devotion if you've cast it um, and if you cast it f- for its flashback, you put 10 one, one human creature tokens out. So now you've got 10 four ones along with Jor Kadeen. Yeah. It's just game over. Like if it, they don't have a block. It, it's, it should be beneficial. <laughs> um, another token sorcerer would be the captain's claws. It's two mana for an equipment. A quick creature gets plus one plus O. Oh. Whenever a quick creature attacks, put a one one core ally creature token in the battlefield tapped and attacking. Its equip is only one. So this on like an early attacker like that goblin rapple master or something like that, like you're just getting more and more and more, and then you drop him and then you have your damage spike and then swing. Yeah. Uh, the blood for blood forged battle axe is another one that kind of lends to this. Uh, it's one mana, equip creature gets plus uh two plus oh. Whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of Blood Forge Battle Axe. It has an equip of two. So you can stack that on him or you can spread them out. Like if you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, but um, yeah, that's kind of the idea. We talked about when we were doing this list of putting Helm of the Host in here too, because it would just get nutty. Yeah. So if you remember Helm of the Host, it was from Dominaria. It's a four mana legendary artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of the equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. And if the equipped creature is legendary, that token gains haste. So to walk through this, if he becomes equipped with it, you make a clone of him. They're all now plus six. The clone of him is, I mean, even even the original is now. Yeah. He's an 11, right? Yeah, that, so he's, he has base, base power five, so plus six would it be a two shot. Commander now he's on now. the two hit, just the copy. Yeah. I mean, not, sorry, the, the, the original. original. And then, yeah, the copy can get sent somewhere else, and that is the same size. Yeah, and it's like, just 11 damage it, from the copy. It's, like, just a, yeah, cool. it's just a fuck ton of damage from this. Yes. But, you know, again, like, you're kind of noticing a pattern, like, well, this is assuming that we can go sideways. So I honestly don't have a lot of effective ways to make that easy on you, other than Goblin War Drums, which gives all of your creatures menace, so now they have to commit to a double block. That's honestly enough in a lot of cases, I think. Yeah, I mean, what you're doing is you're trying to play a numbers game, right? Like, I think that was a, that's the thing behind Eroas as well. Eroas is the other one. So Eroas makes it so people have to double block. Otherwise, yeah. your guys are getting in. Like, granting some kind of global evasion um, is kind of hard to come by. On, and the other thing, I, I probably should have said this early, is I wanted to keep the budget on this deck uh, below 75 bucks. So I didn't put like a Chroma's Memorial in here, which would give them what yeah, that would pro black and red. I think and it gives them the, all flying. And like, it gives them all flying and haste, and like it 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 lights the deck up. But it's an expensive card. I was yeah. trying to keep this thing kind of like lower to the ground. Um, and then yeah, like board wipes are not good. They're, you're trying to leverage your damage. Yeah. So I only have like. I would only honestly stick with maybe one or two board wipes. I have yeah, Blasphemous I mean, Act in here because it's always probably just going to be one red mana. Yeah. But if somebody's outpacing your damage output, I tell me their deck list because I I don't know this thing is this thing is yeah, a mean, lot. Once you this you're going to be the person calling out board wipes. I think that's that's something to take note of in in deck building. Like in this case, you're the problem. Which leads me to kind of like how do we keep our shit together? Okay. So I've added a couple cards, and I bet they're in your list too because they're just kind of the, the story. 
to kind of stall any board wipes coming your way. So there's one that's called Ghost Way. It's two and a white. You exile all your creatures, and at the end of the turn, they come back. Mm -hmm. Well, this is good because a lot of these guys that we're talking about bring tokens with them when they re ETB. Yeah. Um, then there's the Selfless Spirit. It's not actually. It's actually a pretty pricey card. It's seven dollars, but it's a two one flying for two. You can sacrifice Selfless Spirit creatures you control gain indestructible till end of turn. So it's a it's a five one in the air until you need it to be a, a, a reverse board wipe. Yeah, exactly. So this is in response to a board wipe. They became indestructible. Um, Boros Charms is just kind of goes with the, the show. It's one in a white. Boros Charm just floor damage to target player or permits you control gain indestructible into the turn or target creature gains double strike till the end of the turn. Uh, that probably would, depending on how many times you hit them with Jor, it could be over. That yeah. Last, so the 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 last second to last the second and last option I think are probably the ones you're going to. Yeah, those with. are the ones you're going to use. That's sure. what you're going to end up using. Um, there was one other one I can never remember the name of it, but it does the same thing as Ghost Away, where it like quickly exiles them and brings them back. I think it was from like one of the newer Innistrads. It, they're they're functionally the same card. Huh. And once the newer one's cheaper, I can never remember the name of it. Um, and then you could do Teferi's Protection. Yeah. But again. That's that would be like a third of our budget almost. Yeah, that would that. eat up. So I didn't lot. I didn't include it, but that would definitely be something that you'd be looking to get to try to keep things together. As far as you know, your board state goes. Um, and then like the last last these ones are kind of niche, but the hope of Gyropur. So let's say you have a reasonable assumption that somebody's acting like they're going to board wipe. Maybe they're not really super panicked about your board state. This is kind of a hard read, but it's a one mana, one, one for fly, the flying, but you can sacrifice the hope of gyropur and until your end of next turn target player who was dealt combat damage by hope of gyropur this turn can't be the can't cast non creature spells. So you hit them and you just sack it. And then now they can't cast it. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to know, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how you're going to know. Yeah, you have to make judgment calls yeah. on that um, kind of stuff. By the way, is Eerie Interlude. That's what it is. Does it, it, It's functionally the same thing. Yeah, right? exile any, any difference... number of target creatures you Had, control. Oh, targets. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Two okay. and a white. Yeah. There's one other card that's pretty weird. I didn't put it in the deck, but if you... If, if you're... If you're leaning on this strategy as hard as I think you're going to, you might want to get it. So it's an artifact. It's called the Null Brooch. So it's four mana. You can pay two and tap. Discard your hand. Counter target non-creature spell. Play this ability as an interrupt. <laughs> so it's a way to counter any non-creature spell. It's a negate, but you have to ditch your hand to do it. Now, eventually, you're going to value your board state more than your hand. I'm, I'm pretty I guarantee fucking I can almost guarantee that. But if they try to like board wipe you, this is your way to be like, yeah, I'm gonna discard my zero cards from hand yeah. to counter your. No, it it, it will reach a point wipe. where that's totally acceptable. Yeah, basically somebody's gonna have to shoot a cross and grip first to grab your null brooch. <laughs> so that might have to go in. Uh, there's also um, what is that one? This so like just leaning on the white side. I was gonna say there was a white spell you used the other night say, that yeah, countered it, somebody. It won me, and I you hear people say that a lot, but it won me the game. She was gonna win if I didn't counter it. And that's legit yeah yeah it's called it's called um uh there's mana tithe which i don't know if this one's gonna work this one's usually for people's x spells oh but right. depending on your your play group like if you think you can play around it good enough so it's one mana it says ta counter target spell unless it's player pays one so if they pay exactly what they need to to cast their board wipe you can just counter it okay you know, but what more often what it'll probably be is lapse of certainty. So lapse of certainty is two and a white counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of an, instead of into their graveyard. So you get one more turn. <laughs> yeah, you but get now it. you know that motherfucker has a board wipe, right? So so you know what you got to do. That's where the hope of Gyropur, I guess, could follow through with. You just <laughs> nope, and you just keep hammering that person until they're out of your way. And we know that there's enough damage output that you you could potentially just wipe somebody out if you focus them like yeah if you know that's coming yeah so <clears throat> i think we're painting a pretty clear picture with the deck it's it's high damage 
you know, high. He's he's one of the ultimate a- anthem effects. It's plus three. Oh yeah. Uh, they're oh, not yeah. really sharing any tribal synergy, so there's not. I mean, like you could go down the goblin path. You probably could get pretty far. With I think you could doing Cor- Jorkadine goblins. You probably could get pretty far with that. I mean, I'm I'm gonna talk a bit about goblins in my deck. So. That's hot. I'm okay with that. There's one last strategy that we kind of talked about a little bit that Kyle was kind of saying like we should lean on this a little. So since his damage is so high, normally I would say in, in, in we we say about we talk you hear people kind of say this about aggro decks is that you should latch on to one person and keep hammering them. Saskia can kind of go sideways with this. Well, she doesn't really need to stay in line with that strategy. Yeah. She can in, split her attacks. She can pick two people hit one while hitting the other, yeah. or double up on one person. Well, weirdly enough, Jor Kadeen can do this too. He he has he gets himself into the Voltron clock range. Yeah, just by already. virtue of Metalcraft. By virtue of Metalcraft. He's an 8-5 first strike. So we wanted to kind of think about, well, what would help help this along? Like giving him a way to go this direction while his buddies are going the other direction. So yeah, some of this equipment that we've talked about already hits that, like the Blood Forge Battle Axe puts it even further. It gets you closer yeah. to the clock. I don't know about putting it all in one place, but things like, um, you know, the Helm of the Host gets gets nutty too. Uh, but Whisper Silk Cloak, it's it's kind of a staple for Voltron. Gets you through. Yeah, it's three mana. Equipped creature can't be blocked and has Shroud, and its equip is two. So now he's an eight, five, first strike, unblockable Shroud. Yeah. So in three hits, they're out. Uh, the, 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 the fire shrieker, I kind of talked about that too early, but that's, I was just talking about bringing up the damage, but for him specifically, you might want to think about going a different direction than the other guys that you're, the other guys in the airplane to, to reference our yeah fucking weird ass analogy. Yeah. I mean this, this pilot needs to like, he need, I don't know. He needs to go into the, uh, escape pod or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hammer of Nizan. It's four mana, legendary artifact equipment. Whenever Hammer of Nizan or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach the equipment to target creature you control. The equipped creature has plus two, plus O, oh, and has indestructible. Big deal. So now he's a 10. Yeah. Just a little short, kind of annoying, but of a two hit, but he's... But if you can get one He's extra on. Yeah, I mean, any other, any other like artifact. one of those battle cries or anything Any other else. artifact coming into play uh, works for that. Uh, we also added Adriana, Captain of the Guard, thinking that might work out with this whole going different directions thing. She might be better off just being another artifact for him to equip. Maybe. But... I don't know, on paper, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, so like, because, yeah, go ahead. So to, 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 remind the, to remind us about what this is, it's Adriana's Captain of the Guard is a three uh, red and a white from a legendary creature, Human Knight. So she's from the second conspiracy. conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. So she has melee. Um, whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn for each opponent you're, uh, you attacked with a creature this combat. So... If you have three opponents, she gets plus three if right. she attacks because it says it says any other creature. So she gets her own melee, I guess. Yeah. Um, but then she says other creatures you control have melee. So if you split the attack three ways, he will gain the melee from her, so he'll get another plus three. So that puts him at 11, which is where we do want him. But then the other creatures are also but doing But then the other well. people are getting... Another plus three. So now they're really big. Yeah. So that's if you're splitting the attack three ways. If you're sure. kind of being conservative and going two ways, well, then she gives Still. them plus two, and then they get plus five. Yeah. Well, not to not to mention that they're going to stack onto him as well with their melee, right? Yeah, their melee backlogs. Yeah, all creatures you control have so, melee. And she has melee. Yeah, so it it will be a... Like, you need to get out your... I wonder cal- why they didn't just simplify that and just say... Creatures you control have melee. Like, she's melee, and yeah, other creatures weird. you have control of melee. Yeah, like... Unless it, there's some rule there that I'm not really seeing. Unless but, it's but stacked. Get out, you your, think, get out your calculator, dude. Get out your calculator. Yeah, that's that's definitely the the problem with this deck. I've had to bust it out a couple times. So, yeah, that's kind of sub- saying that strategy of, let's split the attack. Uh, there's one last thing I wanted to go over before I give it over to you for yours. Um, and that's just trying to close the game (laughs) so savage beating is an expensive card and i made room for it because i feel like it it just will end it yeah it's three a red and a red play savage beating only during uh your only during your turn and only during combat 
It says choose one. Creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn or untap all creatures you control. And after this phase, there's an additional combat phase, but you can entwine it. So for seven, you're untapping. So for seven mana, you're, everybody's getting double strike and now you have double combats. It's quad damage. That's huge. So with everything that we've kind of enumerated, it, this is... This you should end the game. This should fucking kill everybody. It should. Uh, the last one that's really, really fucking red is Final Fortune. So it's <laughs> red into red. Take another turn after this one at instant speed. But if you lose the game at the end of this turn, though. Yeah, so you better... You better. And there's not... That's not the only effect. I think there's a couple others that do that. There's... Fi- there's... What is it? F- final Reward? Or was that one from... That one from uh, Amonkhet has a guy, like, diving into the pit full oh. of spikes. Oh. Uh, that one... C- could work as long as it's only you and one other opponent. So as soon as their turn begins, you end their turn and take over again and go at them one more time. Yeah. But then you lose the game if you can't finish them off that turn. <laughs> so there's one other effect like Final Fortune. It's not It's not the only one. And then there is that one. But that other one from Amonkhet doesn't really help us in the multiplayer game sure. unless you know for a fact you can just kill everybody as soon as you yeah, gain control. You gotta, you gotta win but it would now. only work on the guy that's right before you. Yeah. Where you just as soon as so you only have like two opponents. Let's say this is a four player game, right? So I've passed my turn. I've, I've done this huge combat. Everyone's wetting themselves, right? I let you go, and then I let the guy next to you go, and then as soon as what's her face starts on my right, I just end her turn and start. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm getting down win. to business now. That's probably like the probably the more common case scenario for the for for that card from Amonkhet. What's the name of the card? I'm I'm, I'm trying to blank. find it, and I just. Can't seem to put it together. Uh, glorious end. Yeah, glorious end. It just says end the turn. Yeah, and then if you don't win on your neck, the end of your next turn, you you lose. Dude, the story in Amonkhet is like fucked up. Like the religion that that Nicol Bolas turned all that stuff into is just so bastardized. Okay, that's a tangent. Yeah, it's final fortune and last chance. So target. Tar- take another turn after this when you lose the game at the end of the turn. That's okay. last chance. And I guess if you have a buttload of money, you could do Warrior's Oath. But that's a $60 card from Portal of the Three Kingdoms. But it does the same thing. So there's, there's sorry, I take it back. There's three of those cards. Um, there's also Chance chance for Glory, which is the Oh, yeah. One. So it says yeah. creatures you control gain indestructible. Take an extra turn after this one. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. So I would definitely be looking at, at adding that one because it's an instant. <laughs> this is that's the spirit of Boros. That anyway. is the spirit of aggro. I think. Yeah. You know, like just we're f- I'm fucking putting it away right yeah, now. Yeah. Like I just need to do this. Boom. So, so you'll notice there's something absent. There's no Sunforger package. You could put it back in. It does do pretty well on him because it does just so happen to give him another plus three yeah or i know it's i think it's plus four I think it's actually. four it's plus four or plus so four. it puts him on the double yeah um, so he would be up to tw- 12 four but I think. like kyle was saying when we when i had it in my deck because you know I'm, I'm just hopeless for instance and sorceries i just can't help it uh you described it as it's a defensive card and it's just I don't know. The the targets that you would go fetch with that two mana would be the Boros Charm to stall. Mm-hmm. Um, that Eerie Interlude is an instant. The yeah. Ghost Away is an instant. I think to it, hurry up and grab them. If you have the money, Tef's Protection to grab. Yeah. And then, yeah, these two other cards to just really end the fucking game. I think the other thing you might be able to do with that is, is uh, remove some opportunistic blockers as well. Yeah. If you want to do that. Like if somebody's going to they put something in front of Jorkadine that's actually going to end them. Uh, you could go tutor up. Yeah. Something a removal spell, like a, something really annoying that. Yeah. And then, yeah, to remove pillow forts. Yeah. The mana, like it would be worth, like, I don't care what the Sun Sunforger costs. It's worth it to remove the pillow forts. Oh considering yeah. Considering how wide we're, yeah. we're, we're trying to fly this seven forty seven forty in dude. Like, you gotta get this shit no, off the it's, runway. Dude, we need a big runway here. Yeah, so <laughs> it might actually be probably worth it to put it back in. If you did, though, I would just keep it... So we talked about um, the Sun Forger before, and we kind of said that you want to narrow your list down of what targets it has. Yeah, like so you don't want to just like toss in this huge, massive package. Yeah, like, so to kind of just off the top of my head, I think Wear and Tear, the mm-hmm. split card is a good one because it's it's it should you draw it it's not super man intensive skip return to dust 
Yeah. Just skip it. Just get wear and tear because that way you can either target an artifact tar- or tar- or twin it, but it's probably an enchantment that you're going for. Yeah, which exactly. Is that, which is that, uh, well, I mean, it could, it could be crawl space. I mean, who knows? Like that, that yeah, would I mean, be there's it. things. Um, the other one that I would put in is something that removes a big creature coming your way. So Swords of Plowshares is the budget version. Yes. I don't know if I like that because it brings your health up, depending on how big that yeah, is. Yeah, which you're not a big fan of but when you're playing red. Are but... they, are they, you know, are they, go, are they the Jorkadine guy that you've latched on with or are they your other people? Who knows? Sure. Uh, I guess if we're talking about sticking it only to the aggressive side, yeah, do the final fortune and then that, what is it? Chance of glory mm-hmm. that just makes them indestructible and you gain an extra turn yeah. after that. Um, Boros charm would be definitely your other target, yes. which either gives him, him, him double strike to end the game or, uh, or sorry, take somebody out or to protect your board state. Yeah. There's some defensive options you could go for. I guess it would be like settle the wreckage, which exiles all attacking creatures and they tutor up a buttload of lands. Yeah. But I don't think you should, I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know if we want to put you on the back foot like that. Like if you, well, if you're relying that, on something like that to keep your ass in the game. And that's the thing to me is it's like your, your resources are best spent in with a deck like this. Trying to just push your thing forward. Yeah. So it can like, go, it can go both ways. I yeah. think just because it gives him plus four plus. Oh. Yeah. So now he has a huge first striking hammer. Like you might never need to un- unattach it. Yeah. It's so true. maybe that needs to go back in. Yeah, if that's going to happen, probably take out what's her bucket. Oh, Adriana. Adriana. Maybe dial back. So I have a very high density of mana rocks in this deck, like like a lot. Um, I put some of the mirrors in too, like the gold mirror, the the, f- oh, yeah. the red mirror, and yeah. the or sorry, iron mirror, and the palladium mirror, just because I figured, well, you know, they're mana rocks that can attack eventually. Yeah. Like once you have mana online, you're out of hand. So there's some options. The null brooch is something that might be worth considering. Uh, that counter spell might be worth considering. Yeah. And then again, I, I've kind of fit this around a, a budget of, it's like 70 bucks. Yeah. So it's like 70 bucks. You could probably dial it back and get rid of like the mirror and crusader. I have that one on here because I'm like, it's a three mana protected from green double striker who would be <laughs> a five. He'd, he'd be a, he'd be a five two double strike <laughs> and they can't be blocked by black or green. Like that's, that's just pretty hot. Ugh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I don't know. I think at the last second, I'm not too mad at this list. <laughs> I'm not too mad at it. It's it, like... I like the idea. For some reason, I'm I'm really attached or interested in the idea of the the moments where it's, okay, okay, we're going to board wipe and we're going we're gonna to stop it. And then you go, get fucked and stop it and then take an extra turn that says, if I don't win, I'm losing. <laughs> like, I really like... I'm that's That turns I'm Andy way, on. Yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> I'm into the, like, hyper-aggressive, like, all right, if I can't fucking close the deal, I'm done. <laughs> you know and mean? you respect like, plays like that, I right? I do respect Where somebody's like just that. like, I'm going in. That's why I like that. I like that thing. I'm g- gain indestructible until the end of my the beginning, end of my sure. next turn, and if I don't win... I'm pretty sure Jeff won with one of those, right? And we were all sitting there looking at it like... Oh, he did, like, on turn... We were yeah. like... What are you doing? Like, how are you going to pull it off? He pulled it off. Yeah. What's crazy is just says creatures gain, your creatures you control gain indestructible. It doesn't say like till end of turn, like they're indestructible. So if you can find a way, like at the beginning of the next, that turns end step, you lose the game. Like that's dope. Like it's just, they're indestructible. I'm going to take an extra turn (laughs) after this one. Everyone can get fucked. Like, like (laughs) chance of glory is <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I just like if they kept leaning on strategies like this, like I don't know, something like something like really crazy, like oh, if you control, I don't know, I'm just not, I just don't know how to design like a good commander for Boros that still plays to its strengths without like copping out and being like, well, you can draw cards and ramp, because I feel like that's what people are looking I, for. I, I like it. what you were describing early though. If it were something Tashar esque in red white, because because yeah, red has wheel spells available to it so you can get stuff into the yard and you can use white to kind of like cr- that's how you create card advantage with white is you pull stuff out of the yard right like yeah, that's you th- artificially do it yeah like that's how you get card advantage with white but there's not a good way to make that application with the commanders available on boros 
Yeah, anyway. I think what we'll see if if we believe what Gavin whatever. Varian I don't. Says I don't is, think he actually knows what's needed in Commander from Boros. But you said that there was like a Twitter exchange. No, where there was somebody a Twitter. was complaining about. So, so Dana the Roach Boros. from from uh, from Commander Central and uh, EDH Rec cast. He he specifically tweeted about it, and Gavin Ver he responded and said that their their design teams are aware that Boros is in need of a commander. But the way the conversation played out... Is that all he said, did, or did they keep... Did they have a back and no, forth? No, they had some back okay. and forth, and the way the conversation played out, I didn't feel confident that Gavin understood the shortcomings in commander. I don't think... I mean, I, this is just conjecture. I'm, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that commander is played by the, their design team as much as other formats. I don't think they understand commander as much. Well, think about the economics of it. it. One, it's an eternal format, right? They don't really like eternal formats. No, they support modern, but only because they can do modern masters. Right. Like that's, that's why they don't really have. Plus they have, they have, they, car, they have product it. available to play other well, formats like draft and things like it's that. It's a business. So. They, if, they, if, they, if they came up with some way to make this subscription based where the only way you're getting these cards is if you subscribe to their product, which we pretty much, we, a lot of people do anyway. We sure. auto go out and auto buy the fat pack or whatever. Like, yeah. They would. So one, yeah, it's an eternal format. It's like once you get your cards, you never, you never really have to buy new ones unless they make new ones, which but, have money. But I'm just—they have to. Co I mean, they cost money in yeah. research and development yeah, and true. printing and everything it's else true. that comes with it, right? And then two, it's Singleton, so you don't need to buy four copies of no. everything. Like it's only like yeah. So like I went out and bought a Shockland of every one of them. So did I. I'm like, well, they're bottomed out. I'm gonna get them now. I'm gonna buy a Shockland. I yeah, buy four of each. I yeah, I don't need four, which each. would cost me a lot of money to do that. Yeah, so... It's about one of each. I mean, and then, yeah, a lot of these are coming from secondary buyers. I'm not buying... I don't buy singles from these guys directly. No. So I, it wouldn't surprise me that this is... Hey, yeah, they have one product a year. They could get away with doing two. They could. They could. They really... People would... I think it would... I don't think it would fatigue their market. Their market their, at all. No. no. Yeah, if you just do a hot reprint on every other one... I, I was amazed when we enough. went to GP Vegas to see how much money people spend on this game. Like I felt like you and I were spending a lot and that we do spend a lot. We get blown out of the water by how much some other people spend on this game. Are you talking about the moxes you encountered at every day? Moxes, table? but then also just the amount of like product people bought in terms of like boxes, booster boxes and involvement in like like people that were playing battle bond building out of a box. Mm. That thing. Yeah. That was cr that's crazy. Anyway, I got a deck too. <laughs> turns out, <laughs> it turns out. Let's get out of the political quagmire that is. I know that is Wizards of I'm the Coast. I'm not. Their, their I guess the whole thing from that is my my. I'm not confident Wizards is going to give a functional Boros Commander, even though we've seen statements that they're working on that design. I'm not confident that's actually going to happen. I'm. I'm thinking they will, but it'll be a cop out one. I don't think it's going to be something that leans in on Boros's strengths. And it'll be like, a Tatiova type thing. Yeah, it'll be kind of like a hey, you can ramp and you draw cards from this thing or something. Not sure. like hey, let's have this just lean really. F like I, I, I like, and maybe this is just my bias, but cards like Chance of, for Glory is is that crazy? The, I want something like on that. Spectrum. No, like, and that's what Boros is. Like, <laughs> it's you, like, you, it's just fucking insane. You can't be a cautious high player risk, with high Boros. Reward. Yeah, I want high risk, high reward, but I want the reward to be you just win. Yeah, and the risk is you just lose because right. that's how it's always fucking yeah. been for these colors. Like, yeah, it's always it is, been this and that way. Is, that's exactly it. Like, you, you need to go for it. Okay, so, so I have to, I have to give credit. One of our listeners, uh, in, in, I kind of borrowed a deck list from him. I guess uh, it's it Thanks, Andre. Pal. And he gave a gave us a list for Corvath and Sylvia. I've I've done some significant tweaking to it, but the core idea, the core principle, what did he come up? Comes with? from him. Um. So let me go over the commanders first of all. I I am realizing more and more that I am a huge fan of partners, even the partners with. Yes. Even the inflexible partners. Yeah. Uh. 
And I think there's two reasons for it. Like one, the partners you, that you have a little you know, more aren't in an open relationship. Yeah, the like ones. they're they're. T- so the, we should just call the originals swingers. <laughs> and the, another these the guys swinger are, partners. These guys are actually partners. These are the monogamous partners. <laughs> so Corvat, let's see Sylvia and Corvat. So I'll I'll read off Sylvia first. So she's two and a white for a two two human knight, and she partners with Corvat, of course. She has double strike, and dragons your team controls have double strike. Good God. Corvath Bright Flame, five and a red for a dragon uh, that is a three four, and he has flying and haste. And knights your team control have flying and haste. Now, I think the obvious box to put these two into is knight tribal dragon tribal knight dragon tribal, right? Um, and 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 you know, I mean, that seems intuitively obvious. There's a lot of white knights as luck would have it in magic, the gathering, and there's a lot of red dragons turns out. So, you know, that's, that's certainly a route you can go. There's only 47 decks currently for these commanders on EDH. It's pretty so low, pretty low. Um, but Andre kind of went with a very interesting route. What did he uh, do? And, and, and I, I actually play tested this once and, I think there were some thing, exceptional things that happened, but I think the core principle works. Uh, so Andre just went with a lot of tokens and I kind of refined my token list just a little bit, but uh, we just want a token because you can actually do a lot of cheap, quick, fast tokens in Boros. We established some of that already in well, talking through Andy's what about list. Your, what about your airplane analogy? Like, don't you want them to get the double strike? Don't you, you want them you to do. get the... And I will get to that. Okay. I will get to that. <clears throat> but let me just establish the tokens. So we've, okay. we've got passengers and we need to... We'll, we'll try to f- fit them into a plane in a little bit here. All right. These are, these are the people that are flying standby. <laughs> they're really hoping that they can get on this plane. High risk, high reward. They're not sure... So this is actually I goblin tokens are are really effective if you're going to be doing these colors. Um so Beetleback Chief. Two and two red. Oh, I forgot about him, damn it. Okay. Beetleback Chief enters the battlefield. I probably say that a lot. <laughs> I'll just shut up. Uh create two one one red goblin creature tokens. It, it's it's a two two. Okay. So we're getting three bodies for four mana. Uh let's see, the Legion War Boss. If I can get this to show up on the page. Sorry, the images aren't showing on my list here. So Legion War Boss, two and a red. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat of Fable. Damn, um, I it also about has, that one. All right, I'll, I'll stop. It also has Mentor. <laughs> uh, Mog War Marshal. Maybe... Maybe. Does he himself have haste? Uh, no. So it's one and a red uh, when Mog War Marshal enters the battlefield or dies, but a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token onto the battlefield. But then he echoes. He does have echoes. So he pretty much just dies. Yeah, so you can basically pay two mana because the echo cost is the same as the casting cost. Sure. Two mana for two goblin tokens. Okay. Uh, you mentioned this one, the Siege Gang Commander. Just really good. Three and two red. Enters with, you create three one one red goblin creature tokens. Okay, yeah. Um, what are some other ones? Oh, there were some some spells. So like empty the warrens, three and a red. Create two one one red goblin creature tokens. Meh. Goblin rally, three and two red. Put four one one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. Uh, dragon fodder, one and a red. Create two one one. Uh, goblin creature tokens. Uh, did I mention Hordling Outburst? So one and two red create three one one red goblin creature tokens. Some of these, you know, are better for their cost than others, but there's a very heavy goblin sub theme here. And yeah, of course, I'm, I'm wondering who I'm talking to now. And of course, Cranko's here. Dude, uh, why isn't this my deck? Fuck this. Dude. I know, right? Should he, should, we just, should have switched. Let's just cut the recording now and redo this. Just <laughs> hand me the list. I'll hand you mine and we'll just re-talk it off. Probably, we probably both would have gotten off more on each other's deck lists. Yeah. <laughs> so Cranko Mob Boss, if you don't know who this guy is, 
Welcome to Magic the Gathering. We're glad you started playing. Uh, hey, I got this Kajor Kadeen for you list for you. It's <laughs> definitely for a beginner play group. <laughs> uh, Cranko Mob Boss 2 and 2 Red. Tap, put X11 one, one Red Goblin Creature Tokens where X is the number of goblins you control. Uh, it's going to create some bodies because it's fucking Cranko, dude. Okay. Um, I put in some other things that create tokens as well outside of the goblin theme, but I really tried to lean into the goblin tokens as much as possible. Uh, Hero of Blade Hold makes an appearance here as well. Um, some spells that are actually kind of nice might include SRAM's Expertise. So two and two white create three one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. It also says you may cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Uh that's a you get a lot of value out of that card um let's see i think i put in i think i mentioned secure the waste as well one that i really like when i was kind of uh when i've tested this and kind of goldfished it as well is an enchantment okay um it's called promise of the bunre what the hell is that so it's two and a white and it says whenever a creature you control dies sacrifice promise of bunre if you do create four one, one colorless spirit creature tokens, huh? Uh, what we're doing here, there's going to be creatures dying. So we're going to pull this off pretty easily. And if you have this in your opening hand, it's actually a really nice surge in bodies, uh, to get that going. So okay. we really quite like that. Now this renders the question, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. What, where's because all the knights? None of these are knights. Yeah. None of these are dragons. Yeah, uh, yeah, Andre, explain yourself. So what Andre was doing was this is this is. So, l- let me back up. That because I'm la- waiting for like. Well, there's no type changing in this. In this colors. For, yeah, for the most part, there's really not. Um, so you know, Sylvia and Corvath, they're they're from Battle Bond, right? They're they're in the fighting pits. That whole that whole list of tokens. That's the filth of the fighting pits. Okay. So we need a tip of the spear. And and this is this is Andre's tip of the spear for our fighting here, and it really comes down to one card. This is this is the secret commander in his deck, um, and it's mere entity. Oh fuck! So it's two and a white for a shapeshifter. Okay, it has changeling, so this card is every creature type. It's a one one, but it has an activated ability of where you can pay X, and until end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness. X, X, and gain all creature types. And so now all They're of these all tokens switch the fuck over. are going to get all of these things that Corvath and Sylvia provide. So basically we're, if, if, if I can contextualize how you're going to play this deck, you should be able to get some tokens established early before other people are getting. And everyone's going to think like, did you read your commanders before you built? Right. Up? And, and, and usually with most of these are one, one tokens. And so you're just going to be going in and kind of like pecking at people the first several turns while other people are developing. Uh, my thought is, is if you can get people get, a, get your opponent somewhere in the 30 to 35 life total range, which is not hard by, you know, like turn, turn four, turn five, okay. somewhere in between when you cast Sylvia and cast Corvath, you're doing pretty good. And you're kind of trying to build yourself Towards this bigger turn. Okay. Okay. Now, in addition to... Is Tarian Mauler in the here? The Tarian Mauler is in here as well. Okay. Just so, had to ask. So Tarian Mauler is another shapeshifter that has Changeling as well. And it has whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on Tarian Mauler. So Tarian Mauler will benefit greatly from Corvath and Sylvia. In addition to the fact that it's just going to get large um, by virtue of your opponent's casting spells. Um, and there's then gain their benefits. What's that? And then gain their benefits. Yeah, and then it gets their benefits. So it's flying, it's haste, it has double strike. Like that Tarium Mauler will wreck. It'll it'll do some good do some good damage. There's also two other changeling spells in the deck that you can sort of add a little extra oomph with them. Okay. Um, one of them is Blades of Velis Vel. What is that one again? So it's one in a red. Uh, it's a tribal instant. But it has changeling, so the tribe that it is an instant for is shapeshifters. So it's all uh, all of all creatures. Yeah, so it's all creatures. And it says up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus zero, 
and gain all creature types until end of turn. So if you have a couple other creatures that are kind of juicy and by juicy, I mean like, well, the commanders themselves, the commanders themselves, but, but even if you have something simple, like a frontline medic, that frontline medic is now a five, three with flying and double strike. So this three, three, this body, that's a three, three can now deal 10 damage by virtue of being one of the targets of blades of Velis Vel. Okay. Um, so something like that, it may seem like it's not that big of a deal, but it actually might be kind of helpful. Another one is shields of Velis Vel. Um, then this is really just to kind of bestow the benefits of, of Corvath and Sylvia sans a mere entity. Okay. Um, again, does the same thing. You can target cre- creatures, target player control, get plus zero plus one and gain all creature types until end of turn. So they all become those things, uh, without the added benefits of getting dude, boosted. Dude, this, hmm. Here's where it gets weird. And this is where it's not already weird. It, it's really weird, but here's where it gets super weird. And this is, and this is where like, I've kind of fluctuated some of the, some of the tokening stuff that was going on in there. But this is where I, I really want to make sure Andre gets credit is, is very clever with, with these picks. So this is what I would like to call forging the spearhead. So if the mere entity is your spearhead. Yeah. I'm asking like, where, how do you get this in a, in a deck that can't card draw? Yeah. How do we get these out? How do we get it? So that's a, an extremely good question. Yeah. Let me, let me give you an example. Okay. So the Amrau scout, it's one in a white it has an activated ability of four and tap search your library for a rebel permanent card with converted mana cost three or less and put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Turns out... The that, changeling is a rebel. That changeling is a rebel. Is Lin Sivy in this? Lin Sivy is in it. So okay. Lin, I, was, I was like, <clears throat> give, give me that fucking Lin Sivy, dude. So Lin Sivy, defiant hero, uh, one and two white for a rebel legend. It's a one three. It has an activated ability of X. Tap, search your library for a rebel card with converted mana cost X or less. Put that card into play, then shuffle your library. It also has pay three, put target dude, rebel this card. This deck is you. improving my mood, dude. <laughs> is it? Yeah, Andre. <laughs> man, I know you can't see me, but I'm I'm tipping my fedora. <laughs> so uh there were a couple there was there was a cycle of tutors in Rivals of Ixalan, uh-huh. the forerunners, if you'll recall. So there's the forerunner of the Empire, three in a red. So when Forerunner of the Empire enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a dinosaur <laughs> card. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Guess what the mirror entity it's is? It's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. It's a rebellious dinosaur. <laughs> uh, you put that card on top of your library in this case. You the case. Mod Catcher? Search for a goblin. So I did put the Mod Catcher in here. <laughs> We've got the Mod Catcher. So Mod Catcher, two and two red, three tap. Search your library for a goblin oh card. Oh my god. Put that card into play, then shuffle well, your you library. Can actually grab Cranko and you can grab Cranko yeah, with yeah, that yeah, one yeah. too. So that one's a double-edged sword with the Mod Catcher. I get that one. Um, the other forerunner, the forerunner of the Legion, two and a white. So when it enters the battlefield, you search your library for a vampire card. Guess what the mirror entity it's is, a, dude? It's a vampiric rebel dragon. <laughs> it's a vampiric goblin. rebel dragon goblin. <laughs> dinosaur. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I said dragon. I meant dinosaur. <laughs> but it is a dragon. But it is a dragon. <laughs> well, we're at it. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's stuff like this where because what the, the principal card, if ever you wanted to have a secret commander, the mirror entity is a good one because... All of these tutors to a specific tribe mm-hmm. apply to the mirror entity. Is Jazal in this list? I actually didn't Jizal put Jazal in here. Do you think that would help at all, or would it not matter? We're, I mean, that's really not that classy, dude. I, I'm actually not not into that at all. I'm really into like, let's just get that get that mirror entity. Out. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 yeah, exactly. So it, that could work. Um, but the point being, like, if 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 I can't reiterate this enough is you want to have a turn with the mirror entity where you just bump bump up all of these tokens to where they're just a bit larger. You know, even if you can sink four mana into them and they're all four fours that are now flying and double strike. That's a lot of damage. So are there any knights or dragons in this entire list? No. <laughs> Aside from the changelings. Not really. Like, let, let's see. Let, so it's not like the tyrant 
you know, no, I, familiar. no, I, I really, we don't I have a mirror and crusader in here. I really revved the motorcycle on this dude. I was like, it's goblins and shapeshifters. <laughs> <laughs> this is a deck after my own heart for sure. What the <laughs> fuck have I been doing for the last week? <laughs> Looking at this, like, you know, glamorous Conan guy that's like, go, go to Fire Sword and I'm really serious. What you were just looking to hear the lamentations of their women, dude. Yeah, well, it's been my lamentation all week. <laughs> now, let me close out this deck with with no, don't keep talking about it. I love it. <laughs> with an idea or a principle that I think we've been at least I've been alluding to, saying that we've got some stuff we need to talk about with Boros. Most groups have a a playgroup rule surrounding the idea of mass land destruction. Yes. Um, if you really, really, really want to play Boros, I think you probably should try to. I don't know, like have a have an an arms race discussion, I suppose, about mass land destruction. Mm. We don't want it to be just kind of willy nilly, like everybody's using land destruct mass land destruction. But if we're being honest, if there is a home for mass land destruction, it is probably in Boros. And it's an advantage that hasn't been. Yeah. It's, it's people don't want it. Like they don't want it in their meta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like people don't want it, but if we're being honest about it, like it is, it is one thing that neuters, the power of Boros because if we're, everybody's asking us. for, and we talked about this to lead the episode off. Everybody's asking for commanders that provide ramp and card draw. Well, it removes the advantage everybody else has from ramp, right? It makes it so that your card draw doesn't matter. And your earlier established board state that you have with Boros now has more staying power and more time to do its thing. And so uh, I will be honest, this particular list, trying to go for the mere entity, it's a little bit of a non-bow. <laughs> because of the man, the activation. Because I need to activate the mere entity. However, like I said, if I get this established and we get ourselves to where we have... My list could probably fit it in. Three easy. or four mana available. Uh because Meaning, I need, if we've got a couple mana rocks or something like that. Yeah, I was going to say, like the Jorka Dean list that we talk about, it's leaning on mana rocks pretty heavily. Yeah. So a winter orb. Yes. Is probably like, even if you don't want to blow up their lands, you can choke it. You can choke it, keep for sure. On the assault. Um, Some ones that I put in, uh, and, and this this is probably, this is a newer one that I think would f would suit the purposes of this deck quite well. It's Fall of the Thran. It's actually one of the sagas that came out of Dominaria. It's five and a white. And it's the first verse of this saga is destroy all lands. So when you cast it, it destroys all lands. Mm -hmm. The second third and th the second and third, I guess they're actually lore counters is what they are. Um, but when you get the second and third lore counter and this will those two will occur on your upkeeps, each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. Remember, because this is happening on your turn, you're the first beneficiary of those returns. Okay. And so with something like a mirror entity... That's what you need. You you have some mana to sink into that now. <clears throat> um, I put in... I put in Decree of Annihilation only to... I, I think it's an asshole card if you try to do the full casting cost where it says, because it's eight and two red, remove all artifacts, creatures, lands, graveyards, and hands from the game. That's not fun. I mean, land destruction isn't fun, but that by, that is fucked. Uh, but if you cycle it, which you can cycle for five and two red, whenever you cycle Decree of Annihilation, destroy all lands. This is what you want with, with a Boros deck. You want to do something like that. Um, I put in another one that I thought, another enchant that I thought would be kind of fun to see people freak out about okay. uh, impending disaster. So it's one in a red during your upkeep. If there are seven or more lands in place, sacrifice impending disaster and destroy all lands. So people see it coming <laughs> like you. 
All right. There's enough players at the table. Everybody's got two lands. Or more. I mean, obviously you want to do it when there's probably yeah, more. But pulling the trigger on that one. We're pulling we're we're gonna do it. I did put in Blood Moon on my list, non basic lands or mountains. Uh that way it still leaves you open. Just slows down greedy decks. Yeah. So so what it does I is I think that it, one's pretty well used. I mean Yeah, and I think that one's if it wasn't so expensive. Yeah, exactly. It's a twenty dollar card at yeah. this point. But this one fits well into this deck because I think it slows down, like you say, greedy decks or you know, it's going to slow down what other people are trying to accomplish. Meanwhile, you're fine if that's the case. You you don't have any problems with that. <clears throat> There's lists for land destruction out there. like, But I think Boros needs it, but that opens you up to kind of a, a moral discussion yours is like, you need to have. Yours, my deck is kind of like early stage boros like it's a new play group people don't really v- understand the value of board wipes right kind of, i have some things that lean off board wipe denial a little bit but i'm not really like and yours is definitely like late stage boros yeah which is the wind con is convoluted you're, yeah you're honestly deflecting like you're trying to make them think does this guy know how to play commander at oh all? exactly and then at the last second go oh shit he totally knows how to yeah play he commander just like better than i do poked us in the yeah, dick and hard. then the last thing is the land destruction uh there's a couple things i want to say about land destruction since i didn't really bring it up but one is uh the attitude you need to have is you're not going to do it unless you're in a position where you can win don't do it because you're behind and you're not having a good game don't yeah, that's, do it that's all that, it's going that to will do earn is, you a reputation for being awful exactly like that's you don't launch a nuke you know i I just do that when it's like okay i'm doing this to make sure you guys are out of my way so i can win right and if they don't understand that well then i don't know what to tell you like you're not playing with adults like if they're like oh but i was gonna stop you from winning like they don't understand the reason you're even playing the game right you've been playing their game for year for years and now it's time from their them to play yours and I take that right from a land destruction quote that I found online. <laughs> that it's been this way for a long time that this aggro has not been able to play the game it wants to play because of this attitude towards land destruction. And I think it's in part because people shoot it when they don't have anything to contribute to the game. Right. So if you're losing, you're already losing. Just tell yeah, yourself, just yeah, go. this was going to happen even without the land destruction in my deck, why would I pro- prolong this? Oh, yeah. You know, just ask them to speed up the game so you can play again or whatever. But yeah, don't destroy lands when you're not going to. Yeah, win. for the health of your meta, for the health of your game shop, your LGS, whatever it is, like you def- definitely be judicious about when you play land destruction But spells. it's looking like for now, that's probably the direction anyone who wants to play Boros should take it yeah. if they're in an, an established play group. Yeah. You know, at least one where people kind of have their decks a little bit. They're not really using pre cons. They're they're kind of in the more realm of, you know, they they know what a they know what a commander deck looks like. They're doing pretty well. It's time yeah. to like but the land destruction thing has been like, oh, we don't do that. It's like, well, this entire co- side of the color pie and this entire identity and feature to Magic the Gathering isn't being yeah. allowed to do. Yeah. And like and commanders- this is in the face of double the life intended life total and you know, triple the opponents. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it, the order is way too tall for, for Boros to fill it. Oh yeah. They are playing. It's just going to stay empty, you know, to write our analogy till the end of the episode. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, that flight is, uh, is going to be continental airlines for sure. Like it, $240 million under because you've been flying with too many empty seats. Why do I think what you just said is probably exactly how that went. <laughs> For Continental Airlines. Because <laughs> you're like, if I'm going to bring up airlines, I better have my ducks in a row before I bring it up. <laughs> That's Boros, dude. That's Boros, It's dude. depressing. It's frustrating. Uh, it's kind of exhilarating when you can pull off the gamble, but you're probably not going to win. You're going to just pull off the gamble to do what it's intended to do in a 1v1 format. Yeah. Uh, kill one person and, yeah and that's cool if you're okay with that feeling because like andy said and i think we should make that abundantly clear here the the list that he shared is you'll get away with it if you're playing with p 
people that are low on board wipes, people that are kind of a little newer to the game. So if you're getting... It's budget. Yeah, it's budget. So if you're getting... If you're sort of newer to the format and you're playing with a group that's sort of newer to the format... Make it for somebody else. Yeah, like, do it. it. Like, it it'll, be, it'll, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. Because it's battle cruising. People can see pretty quickly, like, oh my God, 20? Like, if they are used to another format, so they've never seen... You know, yeah, because it'll output damage. It's yeah, just that it's just that in the face of card advantage and board wipe, you're gonna keep up. Yeah, and so and so like the one that I did, it's it's a little, I don't know, it's kind of cloak and dagger a little bit. Like, oh, I love it. So, uh, again, thank you, Andre. I kind of tweaked it, but I I really liked his idea and wanted to roll with it. So, uh, but even this, it's gonna get undone, especially once if you're playing in a play group with regulars, once they figure out that there's a dinosaur, a vampiric rebellious dragon dinosaur airplane out there. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the, the, there's, there's a linchpin that can be pulled and the whole thing comes apart for sure. So I wonder if you ever made it. Did he say, or is he just kind of, I think he did. Know? He said, I think he took it to a game shop and he had some victories with it. If Hell I yeah, recall. Dude. So he deserves it for sure. Yeah. No, anybody, anybody, if anybody deserves it. It's him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So we're up to Demir. Is our Demir last, next is week. Our last hit. I don't even know what I'm going to do, dude. I have no fucking clue, but I'm going to probably beat a lot better than that. Time. <laughs> really is the riddle of steel so what do you think did we give you something to work with when it comes to boros or did we scare you away from it forever who knows maybe in the future we'll get that boros legend we can all lean on and put our trust in boros not men not women not beasts boros boros is your god conan the music you're hearing is by the ever so dope damn terminus the album is wrath of code the song is it's too bad she won't live You really should seek his music out. He's so kind to let us use it for our little podcast here. All right, so last stop is Demir. Thanks for listening. It really means the world to us, and we will see you again. Bye.